Tortato Cordero. Our stories. Sharing our learning across the Kahoyako. Introducing Emma Jane Morris. Emma Jane is a Year Five Six teacher in Ruma Totara at Glen Avon School. Emma Jane leads the Glen Avon mindset and is currently a within school leader in our Kahoyako. Thinking back to the beginning of the year, how has your learning space changed from then to now? At the beginning of the year, my classroom um, was quite teacher driven. So in terms of like maths, uh, they would work in mixed ability groups that so we would do problem solving. Um, but again, those were quite teacher driven. Like I decided what their learning intention was going to be. Um, and then you kind of tested it in that test kind of format, the really official way. Um, and then say, similar in reading. So I had um, ability groups for reading. And then again, like you would test their improvement through those official um, testing routes. Um, whereas now it's completely different. So uh, the kids all have all of the progressions. They're aware of the progressions. Um, they highlight off which ones they know. Um, and so they know which ones they're still to achieve. And so instead of uh, running groups per se, I run workshops based on progressions um, and kids can opt into those workshops based on what they know that they need to learn. Um, and then there's follow-ups that relate to those workshops. And then we have uh, this time called like show me time. Um, which they can sign up for and then they come up in that time and say Miss Morris I would like to show you that I've mastered this skill and I'll give them a couple of questions just on a little mini whiteboard they'll sit in front of me and do it um, and then I'll be able to sign it off so it really just takes the pressure off that testing they can do it at their own uh, in their own speed at their own rate they can do it directly after the workshop if they've got it or they can go away and practice and it's really cool um, as well because we're able to share their learning more we take pictures of them with their little whiteboards and share it with their parents as well so the whanau is able to celebrate their learning too how did the shift come about so i guess um and during the first lockdown we tried to um give the kids a little bit more ownership of their tasks so we would put up tasks every day and kind of get them to work through them um, at their own rate at their own speed um, and to choose the ones that they were interested in as well. And I guess before this time, I was of the belief that um, our kids didn't actually really have the knowledge or the ability to direct their own learning. Um, however, during that first lockdown period, I really saw actually um, they can manage more than I thought they could. So um, it was kind of like, well, I'm going to try this and see what happens. So I tried it in maths and it was so successful. They were so engaged. They actually understood the progressions and could make good choices about their learning. Um, and because of that, that's why I've spread it out across the board now, across all those core curriculum areas. How are the learning experiences different for your students? Um, during reading pre-lockdown one, um, all of my students were grouped ability groups um, and I would see those groups, we would read a text, um, we'd kind of work on a learning intention that was teacher chosen or teacher directed um, and then they would have um, must do and can do activities following that group and they would um, do those must do and can do activities for the week. Whereas now um, it's completely different. So I have two days of what I call um, content workshops so basically we just they can uh, nominate a content if they want to um, and so we'll have two workshops over two days so four workshops in total um, and it's basically just on a topic that they're interested in so they're learning to read for enjoyment um, the discuss at first I thought oh the top readers are actually going to overpower the lower readers and they're not going to be able to um, share as much and I've actually found the opposite the top readers give the lower readers confidence to share their ideas, they help them with their vocabulary and that type of thing, which I think has been so beneficial. And they're hooked into the reading, they're enjoying the reading because it's a topic they want to learn about. Um, and then the other two days are called our progression workshops. So they're purely targeted based on the progression. So again, there'll be four in total. Um, and you have to come to at least one of each, one content and one progression workshop. Um, but you can go to more than that if you want to as well. And then obviously there's the show me time. And then um, during the follow up time, um, there's must-dos that they have to do each week. Sometimes it's poetry-based, sometimes it's spelling-based. We've also started chapter chat, which they absolutely love. Um, highly recommend it. And um, then they've got can-dos that they can do if they finish off those as well. Can you tell us a little bit about chapter chat? Uh, chapter chat is set up um, by 
a school teacher, I believe, and basically um, they give you a chapter book, um, which is awesome because it's opened my eyes up to uh, texts that I didn't even know were out there, which are so um, applicable to the kids of our age. Um, teach them values, they're interesting as well, which is awesome. Um, you read a certain amount of pages um, each week, and then they give you activities that go with what you've read. And it's awesome because there's a mixture of like research tasks, art tasks, um, maths tasks, writing tasks. Um, and I let the kids, I give them all of the tasks and then I let them choose which one that they want to do. So they get that ownership and they get their choice as well. Um, and then at the end of the week, um, you take a photo of it and you post it up onto Twitter. And all the other schools and classes that are doing that chapter book all post and you can see each other's. You can comment on each other's. Um, so they're building that digital literacy as well. And then also some discussion questions go up that they can go on and comment on as well. So it's cool that they're able to have discussions about the text with people outside of the class. Um, and also when they see what other people have done, I found that it's inspired them and they've been able to think more creatively and produce better outcomes as well. What positive impacts have these changes had on the kids in the room I taught other? I think the biggest positive impact is that they are so much more engaged in their learning. Um, I was talking to one of my top math students and I said, are you enjoying this change in maths? And he said, yes, because I don't have to sit through groups that I already know how to do the skill. Um, so it's awesome for those kids because they're going, oh, I can just go to the one that I need. I don't have to sit there and be bored in the others. Um, and it's also, I think the learning's more targeted and they're engaged in it. They're choosing what they know they need to learn and what they want to learn. And when they've got that choice, yeah, I just uh, find that engagement just shoots up. And then also with those follow-up tasks as well, giving more choice around those and they're able to choose uh, what they do. They're a lot more engaged um, in the tasks that they're doing independently as well. And they're outcomes that they're producing from those tasks is a lot higher as well. What have you learned through this journey? Um, I have learned that uh, our kids actually can do a lot more than um, we kind of give them credit for. I was so of the opinion that I knew best what they needed to learn um, and that it was better if I was able to direct that. Um, but what I've actually seen is that if you give them the skills and you walk them through it and you do it properly, um, that they actually can do it and they actually can make good choices. And then you're actually going to be able to show us that they can do it unless we give them the opportunity. Um, so I've learned that, yes, it's uh, it's okay to be a little bit scared, but to work through that uh, little fear and step out and try it anyway, um, because it totally benefits the kids. And um, now from you know lockdown two, we've had them doing inquiry projects online. Um, so they they've basically chosen a topic that we've given them and they now have the skills to not just work through the questions or activities that we've given them but to go wider their um the depth and the of learning um is so much bigger and deeper they're driving their own learning they're self-motivated they're um completing more and completing it to a higher standard because they're able to choose to learn what they're interested in rather than what we dictate to them that they have to learn any advice for teachers wanting to develop more student agency in their learners? Just actually give it a go. Um, there are some really great teachers around who do do it and do it well. So ask them for advice, ask them for ways to get started. Start slow, maybe start with one subject area and do that. See how it goes, trial how your class goes, find a system that works for you. Um, and then maybe start to roll it out in other subject areas. So yeah, slow change I think worked best for me, but also just make sure that you have in your head um, the routines that you're still gonna keep um, within that time so that the kids are still structured, they still know what's expected and just have those expectations them really clear um, and those routines really clear from the start. Would you rather live on a boat or live in a tree house? Great question. I would rather live in a boat. And it is because a boat, I feel like you can travel around more. So you'd be able to go to different places and see, yeah, see different places. You can go to different countries and that type of thing. I feel like in a tree house, you're a little bit isolated. Like the nature would be cool, the view would be cool, but I feel like you would be able to see more of the world if you were in a boat. Plus I don't get seasick. So that's an easy choice for me. <laughs> hey, Mahi Tahi. Thank you so much to Emma Jane Morris from Glen Avon School for sharing your journey about learning through disruption.